we're going to talk about the infinity orange pump and getting that all set up for your child's tube feeding. So the first thing I like to do is program the settings. So we're going to turn the pump on by pressing holding the on off button for a few seconds. It'll go through some numbers that you don't need to worry about and eventually we'll come to our rate screen. So we have our rate and our dose and this button rate dose toggles between the rate and the dose. The rate is how fast the pump is going and the dose is how much it's going to provide. So let's say, for example, you need to feed your child 60 milliliters every three hours or something like that. And perhaps it's supposed to run over an hour. That's pretty easy <laughs> because um, the rate is in milliliters per hour. So if we want 60 milliliters to run in one hour, our rate would be 60. Your dietitian will tell you what your rate should be. So don't stress too much about the math. Um, but we can just program our rate to that prescribed amount. And then our dose is going to be 60. And so again, we're going to adjust it with these plus and minus buttons. And again, that dose is going to be how much you want to feed. And it might be that the dose is the same every time, or maybe you need to change it depending on how much your child took by mouth before connecting them to the tube feeding. So we have our rate and our dose set. It will save these settings, so you don't need to set it every time, but you do need to confirm the dose every time. That's one of the features of the orange pump to make sure that we're feeding them correctly. I'm gonna turn the pump off for a minute, and then we can work on getting everything set, set up with the bag for the tube feeding. There's a few different kinds of bags that you might use for the infinity pump. And so this is a bottle cap and associated tubing, and then this is a bag. Both of these come pre-packaged, so you're going to use one setup per day. So every 24 hours, you will get a new bag. We can open the packaging, take out our bag. This is a 100 milliliter bag. And so this is going to be for our little ones that have small amounts of food. And so we can open our cap and pour in our milk. And your dietitian will tell you how much they want you to pour in the bag at a time. For now, I'm just going to empty the contents of the bottle into the bag. And then this cap will just go on, it'll push. If you're using the bottle caps, the bottle will just twist directly onto the cap. And so in that situation, I can't really put the bottle upside down if it's got milk in it. So I'm going to put the cap upside down, twist that bottle on, and then we've got that connected to our cap. From here on, the setup's going to be the same for either the bottle cap or the bag. The next thing we need to do is connect the tubing to the pump. So to open this door, I like to take a thumb on either side and push in and up, and that will open the door. And then this part of the tubing we call the cassette. You can treat this part like a rubber band and wrap it around the black wheel and then pull on these tubes to stretch it back and it will snap into place. It has plastic on one side so it can't go in the wrong way. So we just wrap that around and pull it back. Sometimes people ask if it's supposed to be tight here on the wheel and that is the way it's supposed to be because this is going to rotate and that's how it pushes the milk through the tubing. We can snap that door closed and you can check and make sure that there's no, um, it's not getting pinched on the tubing there. We'll turn the pump on. And the next thing we need to do is prime it. So right now we've got all of this air in the tubing and we don't want that air going into baby. And so I'm gonna set up my bag so that I make sure we've got for milk or formula in the bottom. Uh, Let's see, that looks pretty good. Just making sure that the air is kind of up. Having an IV pole or a hanger or a command hook is a great way to get those 100 milliliter bags up so that they sit nicely. To prime the tubing, we're gonna take the cap off the end of the tubing, untwist that, and then we can press and hold the prime button. We can press and hold for a few seconds and then let go uh, this pump has auto prime enabled, so it's going to prime the milk most of the way to the end of the tubing. So we can see it going through here. Um, this end coming out of the pump is a bit smaller, so it's going to come faster at the other side. 
and it might be that Auto Prime gets the milk all the way to the end of the tubing, or it might stop a little bit before, and then we can just hit the Prime button again to get it the rest of the way. And here it comes. All right, so we didn't quite make it um, the whole way, and that's to be expected. So we're gonna hit the prime button a total of three times. So one more time to get it going the rest of the way, and then a third time to stop so it doesn't overflow. So I'm watching that formula, getting ready, and stop. <laughs> so then we've got our formula right there in the end of the tubing, so I know it made it most of the way. If you wanna let a couple drips come out, that's fine. Um, but you don't necessarily have to. Then we can connect this to the NG tube, or if your kiddo has a G tube, it'll connect just the same. So we want it to be finger tight, so just giving it a little twist to get that connected. And then to start the tube feeding, we can hit run pause. But it's actually going to ask me a couple questions. So every time you turn the pump off and turn it back on again and go to start the tube feeding, it's going to ask you to confirm the dose and food type. So our dose button is here with our rate dose, so we can click that once um, and then that'll show us the dose 60 milliliters that's what we want or maybe for example um, kiddo drank 20 milliliters so i only need my dose to be 40 so then i can change my dose if i need to again check with your dietitian on what the numbers for your child will be then we can go to food type that's our top center button and we can choose between formula and breast milk or as this pump calls it human milk <laughs> And so if there is any breast milk in what you're feeding your child, choose the human milk option. A lot of times um, some babies will have breast milk that's fortified with a formula. You still want to choose the human milk option in that case. If it's just straight formula, you can choose the formula option. Once you've got those two settings confirmed, you can hit run pause again, and it will start pumping the milk through our tube. You'll hear it run, pause, run, pause, and that's how it's adjusting the speed on the pump. And so as long as this little circle is going around that says run, it's doing what it's supposed to do. If you need to stop it for any reason, maybe if baby's not feeling well or something's going on, you can hit run, pause, and that will stop the, tube, the pump. And then typically we're gonna let it go. And then the thing that will stop the pump is gonna be that dose done alarm. And so once it pumps, it's 40 mils, 60 mils, whatever your program dose is, it will stop and say dose done. Now, it might be that your dietitian has you set the dose to the maximum and pour exactly the amount that you need into the bag. In that case, you're going to let it go until you get a no food alarm. When you get a no food alarm, if there is still milk in the tubing, you would then prime the rest of the formula through so we make sure baby gets every last drop. Your dietitian should write instructions for exactly how to do your feed and what each feed will look like in your binder, so you can refer to that if you're not sure. But for now, I'm gonna go ahead and pause our pump and turn it off. Uh, actually, I'm gonna leave it on and we'll see if it beeps at me in a few minutes. <laughs> uh, so we can talk about some of the alarms that you'll see on the pump. Uh, we've already talked about a couple of them, but sometimes it can come up unexpectedly, so we'll talk about it again. Dose done is when you are completing your dose. If you're not expecting a dose done alarm, or maybe it's set to the max and you want to just power through, you would just hit run pause, make sure the dose is the way you want it, and you can restart your feed. No flow means that there's a kink in the tubing. And so that could look like this, or sometimes I've seen kinks in the baby's NG tube if they've got it, like maybe their neck is a funny angle or something like that. It'll say no flow in, which is from the bag to the pump, and no flow out, which is from the pump to baby. And so that gives you a clue of where the issue is. No food is gonna be if uh, the bag is empty. So usually maybe that's your cue that you're done. And if needed, you might need to prime the rest of it through the tubing. Or if the bag gets tipped on its side and air starts going through the tubing, that can cause a no food alarm as well. So we just wanna correct that situation. Other than that, you might get error on a number. And if that happens, turn the pump off, turn it back on again. If that doesn't fix it, um, I do recommend calling the Moo customer service. All of the pumps have their phone number on the back of the pump. Um, you can also call our office. We're open Monday through Friday from 8 to 5, and we can help troubleshoot some of those alarms. So this is what the pump sounds like when it has an alarm. My big pro tip is to read the message on the screen to tell you what's going on. 
in this case, it says uh, push run to feed. So, okay, thank you, pump. I've got the message. I'm going to hit run pause to make it stop beeping at me. That alarm is because it's on, but it's not running. And so it wants to make sure you didn't set everything up and then forget to hit run. But typically, you can just hit run pause and then correct the alarm. The pump has a 24-hour battery life. So um, each bar here on the screen lost about six hours of charge. So right now, this pump is fully charged. But when it does get low, you can plug it in. There's a little slot on the side there where we can just push our power into the pump and then you can see the bars are now moving upward to indicate that it's charging if it doesn't seem to be charging correctly you can look at the charger and make sure that green light is illuminated to indicate that it's functioning it can be plugged in while it's running so if you've got this set up by baby's crib and just have it plugged in all the time that is perfectly fine